What's up guys, it's Ollie Steele here from Monuments and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. <music> Greetings internet people. I'm back again. Today I wanted to talk about writing riffs based on chord progressions. This is something I do a lot of, I think a lot of people do. So here is a riff that I've written that's currently kind of unreleased. We can call it the Instagram riff if you want. Uh, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So something like that, um, I'm trying to go for something catchy and it has, you know, a lot of moving parts. There's like slides, pull-offs, this and that. The way I would look at something like that is that started with a chord progression I had, which is... So it's pretty poppy, very simple, it's like four chords. What I would do with something like that is, I'm basically looking at the root notes, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have nice inversions. So this. Just becomes. Those are my, the changes like in the, in the story, if you will. Those are the chord changes, those are the corners that you kind of turn. So I've got my root notes, my progression. And I've got a groove, I've got a tempo. The first thing I kind of do is I'm looking for, I know the order of my chords, I'm looking for, now I'm looking for kind of connecting lines, little moving parts, riffy bits. They're basically gonna come in the, in the shape of pull-offs, slides, stuff like that. There's a little tapping thing at the end. Something simple might be to just go. Just find some something that you can pull off to. That's something I do a lot. I think pull-offs are really good for riffy stuff because you can like, as soon as you pull off to an open string, you're, you, you're free to land anywhere else you want on the guitar. And I think that's really useful if you're trying to do techie stuff or break out of a box and not be stuck. So it's all well and good and it sounds okay and it, you get the sense of the chord progression and it's definitely not like horrible to listen to, but it's not, it doesn't feel like it's been developed to me and I wanna hear something more. I want it to be more exciting, kind of be more twists and turns and things like that. So there's a few ways we can change that up. The number one thing would be not play the same hammer on it all the time, obviously. But there's a few other things we can do. We can try things like, for example, at the moment my root notes are all in the same spot in terms of where they are in the bar. Maybe some of those could be pushed earlier or later. In terms of the lines and the licks, well, the lengths of those kind of determine where my root notes go. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. So the lick for chord one is, you've got, it starts with a root note. I, I want you to know what the, the kind of key is. You go to the kind of ninth, I guess. Yeah. Pull off to an open string. I do that a lot. And then I double pick it. Double picking notes or playing two of the same note in a row, I find is a really good way to keep things fresh if you're playing like notey 16th note riffs. If everything's a different note and you just get do 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 sometimes that's the desirable thing. In stuff like that, I, I find it groovier to maybe double up on things sometimes. Otherwise, it just starts to sound like a arpeggiator or a guitar. It, it sounds like Guitar Hero looks. And then I've got a slide. And then to break things up texturally, I've got like, it's not really dissonance, but it's a bit of a, bit of a clash and you get that note bleed. That's not an accent as well. If it's all just single notes, like I said, you get that kind of Guitar Hero thing. But I want more textures and more twists and turns, like I said. So lick number one is. So as soon as we get to chord two, I've already moved something. The, the root note is a tone below, but I've thrown that down to my lowest, my lowest string, just because why not? It's gonna sound heavier, it's gonna sound less predictable after what I've done initially, and it feels better because it's a big low string. And that's, that's what we want, isn't it? Because gent. So. The lick for chord two. I feel like that's in Atlas, our song Atlas, but different different finger pattern, different frets, but physically I think it's the same thing. So what happens with chord three is I've pushed it earlier. 
It's giving your drummer something to catch on to. You get something a bit more pushy, a bit more flamboyant, a bit more hip hop -y than just throwing the root note on the beat every single time and everybody knows when you're gonna change chord and it's not very groovy. So, so far we have one, two, three, four. That's my lick for number two, which I didn't have to work very hard to find those because they're in the chord. Chord number four is pushed even earlier than chord three was. And we've got just a bunch of slides and hammer-ons. There's another double note there. Now at this point, where I would usually start the riff again, because it's been the end of like the riff, I decided that I wasn't done like trying to manipulate stuff yet. So instead of repeating it where it would normally turn around, this guy here is it's an over the bar line hook, if you will. So in context, that part is one, two, three, four. After the, the hook, it goes through the same chord progression again. It's a lot of the same notes in terms of the licks, but things are just a little bit different because I've pushed into the next measure already. So now things have to be shortened a little bit. And then, I threw a tapping thing at the end because it's got it's wide intervallically. You haven't heard that kind of thing yet, and I think it pops out as a as a hook at the end. It's very simple to me. Like I see that whole thing as four chords, and all of the decision making and the stuff I'm telling you about, like push this earlier, make this last longer, push this up over the bar line, try a slide instead of a tap. Not everything has to be single notes. Try double notes next to each other. It could sound like. I'm just trying my, my best to make the most complicated riff of all time, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to convey the decision-making process that goes into making riffs like this, where the point is I want, it, I want it to be this big, sporadic, catchy, melodic riff that you can't necessarily predict as soon as you hear it. So those are a few of the things that I try to uh, employ to make things sound fresh. If you want to do this with your own music, first of all, you don't have to change anything. If you have something super simple and it repeats in a really predictable way, sometimes that's the most gratifying thing, like that's the heaviest thing, or it's just the most satisfying thing, or the grooviest thing, or it carries the most momentum. You don't have to push something over the bar line or make something complicated. But if you are going for that kind of thing, the parameters that I usually change are things like, does it need to repeat in the same spot every time? Does my chord progression need to be all in the same register? For example, like when I, when I went to that lower root note, or whatever. Double notes are cool. If you're writing a note -y riff and it's all 16th notes, I think double notes are a really good way to break things up. It just makes it ba-bow. It's just groovy. Just groovy and flamboyant. It sounds cool. And then trying things like different textures. You've got a lot. You can do double stops. You can create like nice dissonance. You can try slides over picking. You've got pull-offs, hammer-ons. All that stuff's available to you and all that stuff's going on in this particular example. I think it makes it sound pretty cool and and big and like twisty and turny. But it all comes from four chords. So if you find a chord progression that you like or some root notes that you like, it doesn't even have to be complicated chords. It helps if you have nice kind of extended chords because then it might be quite obvious where to go for your, uh, your in-between licks, if that makes sense. But it doesn't have to be. Nothing has to be complicated, but this one is, and I like it.